I'm John Buchanan. Now, in this video, what we're going to do is to look at Stem Splitter, which is this remarkable technology which allows us to take an audio file and to split it up into its constituent elements. Now, this technology has existed for quite a long time, actually made by third-party manufacturers, but it's the first time we've had access to tools like this within Logic. So what we're going to do is to see what it can actually do, and we're going to look at that across two different types of audio material. So firstly, we're going to look at it on a full sort of bounce of a mix of a pop record. Now, this is a track that I've played on the channel before. It's got a vocal in it. It's got some synths in it. It's got some drums, but only a kick drum. And it's got a bass line. And what's quite interesting in particular is to note that actually the kind of tonal characteristics of the kick and the bass aren't completely dissimilar. And that's going to be quite interesting just to see how Stem Splitter deals with that. Anyway, before we get into the details, let's hear the track. You're not the same person when we're together You're not the light and the dark I remember All that we are is becoming a memory Shadows that dance in the night overcome me Okay, so how do I actually apply stem splitting? Well, nothing could really be any more straightforward. I've clicked on the track, come to the functions menu, and all I need to do is to select stem splitter, which is here. And when I release on this option, here comes a little dialog box saying, okay, well, what do you want? How do you want to separate this file? Well, effectively, there are only four options. It sort of feels like this technology is just going to become more and more and more sophisticated. But for now, I've got four options, vocals, drums, bass, and other. Sounds mysterious. Anyway, nevertheless, all I have to do is to press split. And what happens is that Logic will scan, go through the file, and then it will create a track stack which places those four files within that mix. So the first way to test how good this sounds is to just press play and listen to it like a mix, as we did a moment ago. You're not the same person when we're together. You're not the light and the dark I remember. All that we are is becoming a memory Shadows that dance in the night overcome me well, that's pretty impressive straight away. Admittedly, we could just still be listening to the stereo file. We don't really know how this has been separated, but it does sound pretty good. Interestingly, one thing to note, you probably just noticed that I've taken half a dB off the volume of the track stack, because it turns out that even though the original file doesn't peak at any stage, the sum of the extraction of those stems has slightly boosted the volume. Just something to be aware of. Okay, well, let's do the real test now. So how do the vocals sound? Well, like this. You're not the same person when we're together You're not the light and the dark I remember All that we are is becoming a memory Okay, so the interesting thing to note about that is that, of course, actually it's kind of remarkable that the technology has detected that the reverb and the delay belong to the vocal. So in a sense, the thing that it would be easiest to kind of criticize in terms of the way that this has been analyzed is actually a real strength because the detection has effectively said, oh, you know what, actually those are effects are part of the vocal. That's amazing, really, rather than associating them with the synths. And of course, if the reason why I wanted to extract the vocal from this project was because I wanted to produce a remix, it's highly likely that I'd either just gate that vocal or I'd just chop it up in order to just effectively then be in a position to apply my own effects. So in a sense, the weakest sounding part is the bit that exists in all of the gaps. I think that's pretty good. I definitely feel like I could build a remix around that vocal if I wanted to. Okay, let's see what it's done with the drums.
Well, that's pretty impressive too. It's isolated the kick, and yes, I can hear tiny little bits of the synth pluck that are happening. I can hear the kind of harmony changing, but again, it would be pretty easy to isolate that if I just wanted to select the kick. That's pretty impressive too. Okay, let's see what it's done with the bass. This is obviously the part that I mentioned before, that effectively what we've got here is a sound that has got the same kind of transient shape as the kick drum. And yes, it's playing a slightly different rhythm, but shall I just stop talking and press play? Well, I think that's pretty impressive too. It almost sounds a little bit gated, which of course is what I'd do if I wanted to isolate this part, but I think that's pretty good. Okay, and let's see what else it's kind of put into the other category. So that actually might be the most impressive thing of all. Think about it, okay? What we've got now is a part that locks really carefully with the kick drum and with the bass. It's almost an extension of both of those things, both ryth rhythmically but also from a transient perspective. And yet actually this algorithm has been able to detect and separate all three of those parts. I'm willing to bet that if I just wanted an instrumental mix of this project without the vocal, this will sound really good. And sure enough, it does. If the purpose of me separating these parts out was that what I wanted to do was to have the instrumental and put a different vocal on the top, well, it feels like that's a pretty convincing mix. So this is kind of amazing because the, the temptation would be to feel like, okay, well, all of the separation just needs to be frequency based. In order to isolate the kick drum, we just need to be focusing on the low end. Well, no, because that's where the bass is too. And also there's plenty of low end in the kind of full track other stem as well. So actually the way that this works is much more sophisticated than just separating things out into different frequencies. I'm impressed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute all of that for a moment. And what we're going to do, in fact, we can just park that track stack all together and we're in good shape. What I'm going to do is to come back to the beginning of the project. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a movie. So I've got a movie on the desktop of this computer, which I'm going to come and just get. And in a bit of shameless promotion, this is the promotional video for the Teachable course that we've recently launched, Orchestral Sample Programming 1. Do go and have a look at that if you haven't already. So effectively, when I import a movie into Logic, I have an opportunity to open the movie for sure, but also to extract the audio track. And the audio track for this film I just need to choose my frame rate. The audio track for this film is a combination of a voiceover of me and it really is shameless narcissism this, isn't it? And a um, number of the pieces of music from that course underneath it. So let's just make the video a little bit smaller so we can see the audio file that's been imported. That's just up here. And what we can do is to watch the film. This is like pop eating itself. Here I am watching a film that I've recorded of myself. Wow. Next, I'll be getting a personalised mug. I'm John Buchanan, and welcome to this orchestral programming course. There are so many opportunities for media composers these days. Love that guy. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to apply stem splitting to this file. Now, again, let's just think about this for a moment. What we've got here is a number of sampled orchestral pieces of music, and what we've got is a voiceover. So. Let's see how it gets on. So again, what I need to do is to come to functions and stem splitter, and I'm just gonna select that option. And it's hiding behind that window. So I'm gonna just move this out of the way. And again, we've got all four options. Now it feels a little bit like, oh, in fact, I can't move that. So I'll move the film instead. We'll go for all four again. It feels like this is gonna be much more of a test. Let's see. Okay, so again, I'm gonna split that out. It's exciting, isn't it? As it kind of expands into its own track stack. 
Well, it definitely looks like the voiceover, in other words, the vocal, is a nice big audio file. Everything else looks a little bit strange, but okay, let's have a listen. Um, this is the voiceover. Here we go. I'm John Buchanan, and welcome to this orchestral programming course. There are so many opportunities for media composers these days, whether you want to write for film or television or for trailers, whether you want to write production music, or whether or not you just want to work with a group of orchestral sounds for your pop arrangement. That is amazing. That is an amazing thing. Okay, that's, that's wow. Okay, here's the drum stem. This looks, in fact, I'm just gonna park this movie out of the way for a moment. It will pop up up here now by closing that window. Uh, okay, so there is some orchestral percussion in these pieces. Um, I'm just looking through the waveform. It doesn't look promising, does it? <laughs> okay, bit of a cymbal crash. What is that? Okay, a uh, little bit of a robot got involved. Okay, so that's not quite so promising, but timpani at the end. Drama. Okay, so, meh, mm, yeah, I'm just gonna leave that at that. Okay, so what does bass sound like? Wow. Ooh. Again, not great. So this really needs to sound like the whole piece of music, doesn't it? And it kind of does. But without question, the most successful bit of extraction has been the voiceover, which is amazing. Now, the reason why this is so useful and you media composers who work to picture will already be shouting at the screen and hollering and whooping in delight is because frequently we work with production companies who have got better things to do than to send us... Um, that's a generous thing for me to say. Um, films which have got the voiceover baked into the temp music. Now, the, one of the biggest problems about being a media composer is that someone will say, okay, well, we'd really like you to rescore this scene. We've got a piece of music that maybe is working or not working for a TV show. It's 45 seconds long. Can you write a new cue? Well, the answer is yes, of course, no problem. Be delighted to do that. But what I really need is the audio separated. I need the voiceover separate from the temp music because when I'm composing, I want to have access to the voiceover, but I don't want the temp music because that's the bit that I'm replacing. And what will often happen is that you'll get a baked in QuickTime file, which has got both of those things mixed straight down the middle. By the time you get around to saying, uh, can I have another version? They're onto the next scene and they're basically saying, do the best you can with the resources we've already sent you. Well, this could be an absolute game changer. And I don't really like that for phrase because it's so clickbaity, but that is amazing because to be able to say, okay, I'm just going to extract the voiceover, boot off the rest of the music, that is great. This is great. Stem Splitter is great. And yes, it definitely feels like five years from now, we'll look back on this video and think, oh, wasn't it quaint when there were only four separate options? And you know what? Algorithmically, it sounded a little bit full of artifact, but nevertheless, in terms of a first step, wow. It's pretty impressive. So yeah, stem splitter, easy to use and capable of remarkable things.